Despite the promise of high agricultural productivity in North India, the Green Revolution also sowed the seeds of unforeseen problems brought in by new technology, leading to a gradual decline in production levels, especially in Punjab. Extensive use of high-yielding variety seeds, chemical fertilizers and pesticides gradually brought in the downside. Over-exploitation of groundwater, unreliable canal irrigation and power supplies, crop infestation by pests, water logging and soil salinity, mounting costs of input and production in an uncertain market. An urgent need was felt to control the damage before it became irreversible. Punjab agriculture uh, now is facing a very serious problem of uh, sustainability and economic viability. The wheat and the paddy rotation in Punjab uh, has made uh, the country self-sufficient, but uh, we have uh, paid a very heavy price for it. Punjab soils, they have become deficient and uh, the environment is being polluted, water table is going down. So we need diversification, particularly from paddy. In 2002, the Sir Ratan Tata Trust, or SRTT, launched an initiative to revive the Green Revolution in Punjab with a broad strategy that aims to facilitate the implementation of agricultural diversification. The Trust's key partner within this initiative is the Punjab Agricultural University, PAU, in Ludhiana, along with the Agriculture Department of the State Government, brought in to help upscale the project. We are sowing paddy on to 2.6 million hectares out of a total of 4.2 million hectares under cultivation in Punjab. Almost 60% of our area during this season is under paddy. So we want to do away with at least 1 million hectares of paddy. Cotton has been a very, very important crop. Uh, about 14-15 uh, years back, uh, we used to harvest about uh, 26 lakh bales of cotton. It went down to 7.5 lakhs, so it plunged down so drastically due to in built of pesticide, pests, particularly American bollworm and others. The transition of paddy areas to cotton was effectively enabled by Integrated Pest Management on Cotton, or IPM, which is one of the key components within the Trust's initiative. Particularly in Punjab, which contributes to approximately 33% of the total cotton production in India, the cotton crop is vulnerable to infestation by a large number of insect pests, such as American cotton bollworms, jacid and white fly. Prior to commencement of this initiative, the farmers were growing late maturing disease susceptible varieties of cotton. The crop was not sown at the optimum time and large doses of insecticidal sprays with synthetic noxious mixtures were indiscriminately being used. Consequently, the cotton yield was very low. Indiscriminate usage of pesticides also led to increasing costs and a gradual pauperization of the farmers who went into severe debts. <laughs> IPM involves timely sowing of hybrids of cotton tolerant to pest and disease, optimum use of energy subsidies, regular surveillance and de-weeding, management of insect pests using optimum insecticidal and non-insecticidal methods of pest control and encouraging the use of natural enemies of pests and practices that promote a good crop. The PAU has since long been advocating that the revival of the cultivation of cotton requires the adoption of IPM technology which we have already developed but this remains to be demonstrated to the farmers. It is the Sir Ratan Tata Trust which provided us a very timely financial support and the, the platform by which we could adopt a very unique method of adopting the entire village rather than the individual farmers to demonstrate the benefits of IPM. In March 2002, 166 farmers owning a total of 796 hectares were adopted in Kubban and Gobindpur villages in Firozpur district of Punjab. A combination of American, Desi, BT 
and hybrid varieties of cotton were sown and monitored during the duration of the project between 2002 and 2005. Over the next two years, farmers from four more villages were included. During its first phase, scientists from PAU monitored the crop and pest situations every week during the season, educating farmers on identifying pests and protecting their crop. Working hands-on with farmers has led to the development of innovative interactive platforms. A 24-hour helpline manned by senior scientists of the entomology department addresses pest-related problems from farmers across the state. Life improved dramatically for farmers like Kartar Singh, who opted to implement IPM in 2002. Two years later, Kartar Singh has seen his yield increase by 33%. From 2002 to 2004, the project saw a positive impact in terms of increased area under use, reduction in number of insecticidal sprays and mixtures, and a significantly higher yield per hectare. During this period, IPM farmers have had a 45.6% higher return in comparison to non-IPM farmers. With the coming up of BT cotton and integrated pest management, uh, the harvest, uh, they, have, they have increased, the area has increased, and uh, this year we are expecting 24 lakh bales. We went down to 7.5 lakh bales. The tremendous impact of the cotton IPM project in its first phase has led the trust to take forward these success stories into phase two from February 2005, where the focus is developing an integrated implementation strategy with other agencies involved in the diversification process. This has been adop adopted in eight villages in the four districts. Farmers are very happy and the progress is very satisfactory. More and more people are coming that we should adopt more villages for them. So last year we adopted eight villages. This time we have increased our number to 56 villages. And in fact now the State Department of Agriculture is going to take up this program of IPM on a massive scale in a phased manner. In June 2005, the Trust operationalized a new two-year project with the Department of Agriculture to upscale cotton IPM technology in 112 villages across 28 cotton blocks of the state. Sir Ratan Tata Trust will continue supporting PAU and the Agriculture Department of the Government of Punjab to upscale its earlier projects, keeping its commitment to restoring the agricultural abundance of the region and impacting the quality of life of its people.